Hello. Yeah, hello, Dot. Can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, can can someone hear me? Good afternoon, Bob. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, I'm sharing my screen now. Okay. Right. Can you see the screen? Yes, we can see the screen. Okay, all right, so this video is being recorded. The session is being recorded. All right. Uh, so um, earlier today, when we started, if you are just joining us, you're welcome back. So earlier today, when we started, we started with uh, sensitivity analysis. So we, uh, we were able to look at sensitivity analysis for Xenox PLC. So um, on the basis of that sensitivity analysis, we were able to populate this figure. Can someone hear me? I can hear you. Thomas, can you hear? I can hear you. So on the basis of that sensitivity analysis, we were able to arrive at this figure. So we did that in the, in the first part of this class. So what we want to take a look at now is this second part. So I think this is where we stopped. All right. So what I'm going to do now is we want to take a look at, if you take a look at the question, the question says we should create two input data for EBIT. EBIT is earnings before interest and tax. So two input data for EBIT for 2003, okay, which will depend on cost of sales uh, for 2003, we depend on cost of sales to sales ratio and sales growth in a reasonable uh, range. Okay. All right. So now what we have to do here is we want to use a two input factor. Here we use a one input factor. In this one, we use a one input factor, and it was only sales growth that we referred to, only uh, sales uh, forecasting factor rather. We refer to only sales forecasting factor here, but in this case. We are going to refer to not just sales forecasting factor, but sales forecasting factor and also uh, the forecasting factor for cost of sales. So we want to take a look at what is the impact of these two forecasting factors if we make these two forecasting factors our independent variable. What will be the impact of those forecasting factors on the earnings before interest and tax, given that we have a range of sales growth from 1% to 10% and a range of... Um, Cost of sales, cost of sales to cost of sales to sales from 48% to 52%. Uh, All right. So what I'm going to do as usual is I'm going to take this back to how Excel will give you by default. All right. So that's what I'm going to do here. Can someone hear me? I can hear you. Right, so, so I said earlier, I'm taking this to a default settings of Excel. I have to take it to default settings of Excel because Excel will not give you in that way. So this is the default settings that Excel will show you. All right, this is the default settings that Excel will show you. It's left for you now to now format it in a professional way like this. All right, 
So what we want to do now is we want to do the normal thing. Excel will not show you this one too. So we want to do the normal thing now, all right? So what we'll do for a two input sensitivity analysis, please take note. Take note of the difference between these two input sensitivity analysis and one input sensitivity and one input sensitivity analysis. Take note of the difference. So see what we are going to do here and compare it with what we did for one input. All right. Now, in this place now, we are going to have our sales growth rate. Now, the first thing we will do is to forecast, is to format this to percentage. So we have to format this to percentage. Fine, so I've done that. So I can now say one, I can say two, I don't need to say three again. I'll just select these two. I'll take it down to 10%. Fine. So here I can just take it back. So I want this map place is fine. All right. So that's what we have. So the next thing now is our EBIT. Now the EBIT is for 2003. So we'll come here and go and pick EBIT for 2003. So you can see what I'm saying. You can see what I'm doing. In this column, this is where you type it. This is where you type your, uh, what is it called now? Your independent variable. All right. So we go and pick a bit for 2003. Where is a bit for 2003? So I'm scrolling up to pick a bit for 2003. I want you to take note of all this because in the final um, project you will do, you have to do a presentation. That you explain everything we are doing. You have to do a presentation in which you must explain everything. And so on that basis, we will be issued the e certification. So, so I'm picking this 2003 earnings before interest and tax. Great. So it comes here. It comes here. So the next thing I have to do, that's the first step. The next thing I have to do is I have to select everything that we have here, all right? Then, if you have not forgotten, we come to data, we come to what if analysis, I will select data table. All right, so this is a two input factor now. In, in the one input factor, someone is raising a hand. Okay, boss. Okay, yes, I can hear you. The figure you just picked now, the EBI team, we are copying formula, right? They are what? Not be sure. We are copying formula. It's not um, a formula. We, we've already calculated our earnings before interest and tax, our EBIT. Yeah, you know, I, I know. Okay, so, 2003. Yes. Yeah, that's what we picked. Okay, so it's just the figure. It's just the figure. It's not formula. Okay. Do you get it? Yes, it's just a figure that we not formula. Assuming this is EBITDA, assuming this is EBITDA, what would I pick is EBITDA and not EBIT. Yes. Uh, so that's okay. it. So for raw inputs now, now our raw input is our cost of sales to sales ratio. Right? That's our raw input, cost of sales to sales ratio. So which factor, so we'll go to the forecasting factor. So the forecasting factor the cost of sales to sales ratio is 50%, right? Now, what is our input? Our column input. Our column input, I'll come back here so you see it. Our column input is sales growth rate by, uh, by year. So we have to come here and pick the forecasting factor. So we have to come here and pick the forecasting factor. Sorry. Oh, hold on. So we have to come here, so I have to select this first, click on this first. So we pick the forecasting factor here. So this is two inputs now. Do you see the difference? In only one input, what we just did was to have the sales forecasting factor in the column input cell. And there was nothing in the row input cell. But in two inputs, we have both the row input cell and the column input cell. Do you get now? So let me explain now. So what this one is now saying is that we are taking these two forecasting factor we are having ranges of sales growth percentage and um, what is it called? 
cost of sales to sales. Do you get? So when I want to see, giving all those arrays of cost of sales to sales and sales growth rates, what will be the impact on our earnings before interest and tax? So that is what the sensitivity analysis is going to show to, is going to show to us. So if I click on OK, so Excel is running the sensitivity analysis for us. Excel is running. So I believe it has. OK, sorry. I want to scroll down. Great. So you can see now. So we have our information populated. We have our information populated. Is there any question here? Do we understand this? Can someone hear me? Hello, yes, please. Can Sorry, you. can you can you just repeat this because I can I just what? Uh, what was it? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you. Please, can you just uh, can you just repeat this? I just joined now. We should, we should try and join the class. Let's try and join the class so we don't take on the table. Okay, the second table. No, it's, it's fine. I will repeat it. But let's try and join the class early. So we don't we don't repeat, uh, take us back. All right, so I will explain again. I'm sorry for that. No problem, no problem. So I'll, I'm, I'm taking out all this, and I'm taking out this. Okay? So I don't need to explain. You know how to format a cell to percentage. So that's what we did here. And we have... And we have the range of sales growth, um, sales growth from 1% to 10%. You understand how we got this? So this one... No, uh, sir. Yes. Yes. So this the one is our... Group. Yes, sales growth now. The normal sales growth from 1% to 10%. It's in the question. Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. okay. Then for this one, this is our cost of sales. Management is saying, okay, we are having a situation here. Let's say our cost of sales... So sales is 48 percent, range of 48 percent to 52 percent, 48, 49, 50, 51, and 52. Do you get for every 100 naira sales, every 100 naira sales costs us 48 naira, every 49 naira sales, every 100 naira sales costs us 49 naira, like that. That is the cost of sales to sales in ratio. Is that is that taken now? We understand that part, right? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yes. So if we get so, if we get that part, if we get that part, so the next thing is, I come here, I go and pick a bit for 2003. So, a bit for 2003 is this. Can you see that? Then I press enter. Yes. Exactly. So it gives me a bit for 2003 here. So the next thing is now we want to see how sensitive is cost of sales to sales. How sensitive is cost of sales to sales and the sales growth rate? How sensitive is the cost of sales to sales and the sales growth rate? Okay, on our earnings before interest and tax. Do you understand? So that's what we want to figure out here. So what I'm simply going to do is to select everything that we have here. You see that? Then I come to data. All right, I come to data. And I come to what if analysis. And I come to data table. All right, so the first thing we are going to see here is the row input cell. The row input cell is cost of sales to sales ratio. This is this one. Then you go up to your income statement and pick, pick this 50%. Do you understand? Then the second one is 
I'll scroll down so you will see it. The second one is your sales growth rate per year. The sales growth rate per year, the input forecasting factor is this, which is the turnover uh, forecasting factor. That's 5%. Do you get? You know why it's 5% percent that because that's the sales forecasting factor. So here, you say, okay, that's all. Then you come here and look at your data table. So you have your values already. So this is, so what this one means is that if the cost of sales to sales ratio is 40, 49% and our sales growth rate for 2003 is, is 6%, it means our EBITDA, let me put this in color so that you will see how they connect. So I'm putting this in yellow and I'm also putting this in yellow. yellow. So you see the intersection now. The intersection is 242. So if we have it to be 49 here, and we have it to be 6% here, EBITDA will be 242.2. If we have it to be 10% here, we have it to be 52% here. EBITDA will be 210.3. So that's what sensitivity uh, analysis. Like two ways. Yeah, I understood now. All right. So we actually do not have much time to waste there. I believe that's understood. So the final part we want to go uh, look at today is scenario analysis. scenario analysis. Now, what we have been doing before, um, before now, can someone hear me? Yes. Okay. So what we have been doing before now is that we have been changing the forecasting factors and we are seeing the effect of the factors on our projected numbers. All right. But what we want to do here is we want to see scenario analysis now. Scenario analysis is now seen in this table. We are saying we have two we have two cases, okay. In case you have management is telling you um in the management meeting, they are saying, okay, they want to make projections, okay? But in that projections, there are two case scenarios. There's, there's an optimistic there's a pessimistic case. An optimistic case is the best case scenario. It's another one for saying best case scenario. Why pe pessimistic case? It's another one for saying worst case scenario. So best case scenario, when somebody is saying best case scenario, best case scenario is that it's a favorable scenario, like we're having our cost of sales to be X percent, Y percent, or SGA to sales ratio is X percent. What will be the impact on our earnings per share, our dividend per shares, our return on equity, and our interest cover or times interest end? Okay, so we're having a best case scenario and a worst case scenario. So we now want to see how Excel can help us calculate those scenarios. This is very, this is um, quite interesting. So I want you to listen. All right. Can someone hear me? Yes. Yes. So what, what we will do here is you see come to your data. That's where you see your scenario. All right. Uh, it does not matter where this cell is for now. Okay. It does not, can actually be anywhere. It can be here. It can be here. It can be here. So it does not really matter where the cell is. But let me choose to put it here. I can put it here. You see the same thing. Anywhere you put it. But that does not really matter anyway. So what we'll do is you come to data. Uh, on our data, you come to what if analysis and you see come to now, no, not data table this time around. You come to scenario manager. All right. So in the scenario in the scenario manager, you can see that I've I've actually defined two scenarios here, which is the optimistic and the pessimistic case scenario uh, for 2006. All right. So but what I will do is I will delete them because I want to start afresh. So if you take a look at the question, now take a look at the last part of the question, if you are with the question. Just follow me if you are with the question. Now the management also wants to look at a few scenarios for the future because sensitivity analysis of this type can be done with data tables that can, uh, okay, because sensitivity analysis of this type can be done with data tables can show sensitivity with respect to only one or two inputs variables per table. Do you understand now? So the reason why they want to look at scenario is that sensitivity analysis can only show 
one or two, but scenario will show quite a lot. Do you get it? And it will tell us the best and the worst case. All right. Now, they say starting with model 11. Okay, let's ignore that. Do a scenario analysis for an optimistic and pessimistic scenario. Defined by management as follows. Now, management has identified an optimistic scenario by saying sales growth rate is 7% per year, cost of sales is cost cost of sales to sales is 49%, SG and A, which are OPEX, the sales ratio is 28%, gross, gross uh, plant, plant property and equipment growth rate is 7% per year. All right, fine. So what we're going to do first here is we're going to click on add. Now, the first thing is we are going to define the scenario name. That's what I want to So we're going to define the scenario name. And this scenario name, the first one is optimistic. Sorry, can we reduce the background noise? Can someone hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Please let me turn off our mic. So the first thing is we're going to define the scenario name, and this is optimistic 2006. All right. So now, um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to select our changing, uh, our changing cells. Okay. So. For changing sales, now, how do you know your changing sales? You refer to your sales growth rate of 7%, cost of sales to sales of 49%. Those are your changing sales. Those are the forecasting factor that will form those changing sales. Do you get? So the first one is uh, sales growth rate of 7%. So we'll come here, we go up, I'll scroll up, then I'll come and pick this. I'll pick this. Can you see? I'll put comma. Then the next one is, it, in, we are still going to use that 7 percent tool. What we are just picking is, we are picking those forecasting factors that are relevant. All right. So the next one is cost of sales to sales ratio of 49 percent. So we select 49 percent. We type comma. The next one is SG and A to sales ratio of 28 percent. So go to SG and A and select this. Type in comma. The next one is um, gross P, P, and E, 7%. So go to where we have gross P, P, and E. Gross P, P, and E. Have I passed it? Okay, yes. I have not. So this is 8%. Great. All right, so here you can choose to prevent changes to this um, input you have selected, or you can choose to, you cannot check it. It depends on what you want. If you don't want anybody to change that input, you can prevent changes. If you want it to be changed, you can uh, deactivate it. All right. So here, I'm going to click on um, OK. Great. So what I'm not going to do here is, this is the scenario value now. This is where you will now enter your scenario values for optimistic case or best case scenario. So what we're going to do here is, now we're told that sales growth rate is 7% per year, right? 7% is the same thing as 0 0.07, okay? The next one is um, 49%. That is the same thing as 0 0.49. Yes. The next one is 28%. Um, That's the same thing as 0 0.28. 0 0.2. Please try and practice this on your own. Okay, the next one is 7%, and that's something as 0 0.7. Abby? 0 0.7. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm not going to press OK. So, I'm true with optimistic case. I'm true with optimistic case. Now, next one is we want to go to pessimistic case or worst case scenario. So, worst case scenario, we still come to add, then we say pessimistic. Pessimistic 2006. Fine. All right. So for pessimistic 2006, it's still the same thing. So we are not going to, the changing cells remains the same. 
you can see there's a comment here created by Wilson on 5th of uh, July 2020. So Excel will give you this automatically. All right. So here now, so here now what we we'll do is just to click on OK. Now you're gonna define your pessimistic scenario. Now pessimistic scenario, sales growth rate of sales growth rate three percent per year. So you change this one to three percent. You same thing as zero point zero three. Um, what again? Cost of sales to sales of fifty one percent. Fifty one percent is this. Um, SG and A for sales ratio of thirty percent. Thirty percent is three zero. Then finally, uh, uh, okay, PPE growth rate of nine percent. That's zero point zero nine. Then you click on okay. Great. So that is it. So what you now do next is you click on your summary. All right. Now this summary is where you want your results. Okay, where you want uh, your results to be picked. Are you getting me? So where you want your results to be picked. So that's where you click on for summary. So for summary. What I'm going to do for summary now, I'm going to take out all this, right? So if I take out all that now, so the first thing is we have our what's it called now? So if you see those results, the results, go and tell me the results we are expecting. Can someone hear me? Yes, you can. All right. So the results we are expecting our scenario to display for us is. We should, uh, those are our outputs, Abby. We have the net income, we have earnings per share, we have dividend per share, we have return on equity, and we have the time interest end for both 2003 and 2006. Great, so what I will do is, we'll start with 2003. So for 2003, the first thing we are picking is our net income. So we'll go and pick net income for 2003. So I'll pick this for 2003, right? I'll Say comma. Now, uh, what again? I'll pick earnings per share for 2003. Are you following this? Hello? Yes, yes sir. We are following you. So let's go and pick earnings per share for 2003. So this is earnings per share for 2003. What other results? Dividends per share. We have picked it. What other results? Return on equity. Return on equity. Yeah. So this is return on equity for 2003. We have picked it. What other results? Time interest end. Time interest end. Okay, time interest end for 2003. Where do we have that? Okay, for 2003, I've picked it. Great. Now, we also have for 2006, Abby. So go and pick the same thing for 2006. We're going to pick the same thing for 2006. 2006 starts with net income. Then we go to any per share. We go to any per share for 2006. Okay. Then we go to dividends per share. So I'll pick dividends per share, right? So the next one is uh, returns on equity for 2006. Times interest end for 2006.
right? Okay, so, so I've been able to pick for both 2003 and 2006. So what you just clicked on now is okay. So once you click on okay, what will happen is Excel is going to run your your scenario output hmm? by creating a new sheet for you. Do you get? So I want, I just want to tell you what will happen before it, it happens. So Excel will run a scenario analysis for you by creating a new sheet. Once that new sheet is created, hmm, it is now left for you to have a formatted Excel work file or sheet in the same workbook. So in that formatted workbook, you now input what has been created for you into that formatted workbook. Let's see what happens. I click on OK. So Excel is running my scenario for me. It's going to take some time because it's, it's an advanced calculation. It's a very advanced level calculation. So it will take some time. It's still running. If you can see, you can see something here that calculates, calculates. So it's running an advanced analysis. So let's wait for some time. We're going to wait for some time to get our output. So what it's doing is it's running those analysis based on those scenarios you have defined. And based on the output you have defined, Excel is calculating each, each output one by one. So that's why it's taking some time. It's still running. Okay, Dorothy, you raise your hand. Sir, does we all run different um, sheets for okay. the different. Okay, sorry, Dorothy, let me pause you there. So we have our output here already. Uh, I mean, if you can see what the screen. I mean, yes. you cannot, you cannot yeah, see, can see. Yes. Can so, see. Yes, we have yes. our output. Exactly. So we have our output already. Excel has written our output, showing us current values, optimistic for 2006 and pessimistic for 2006. So this is it. This is our output. So if you take a look at it here, there is a note. Excel will also will tell you a note. Excel will give you a note. Note, current values color represent values of changing cells. At the time scenario summary report was created, changing value cells for each scenario are highlighted in gray. I believe you understand that. So Excel is telling you that these are the current scenarios. If you, if you observe, these are the current scenario we create, we have in our forecast. Then these are the optimistic, optimistic scenario we, we selected, pessimistic scenario we selected. Now these are the different output results. Do you get? So what we're gonna do here is we're going to go back to our but before i go back somebody was asking a question okay i thought uh, uh, about 2003 i can only see 2006. 2006. yes i thought we did for both 2003 and 2006. we did for both 2003 and 2006 yes but yes. we can only see 2006. Let yes. me see. Did we define it based on what we define? I think that's where we got it wrong. Mm -hmm. based on what we, what we, we actually define those optimistic and pessimistic case as 2006. Six, okay. okay. That's what happened. So that's why Excel is only is returning 2006. So, um, but in the, table, in the formatted table, we can have it because we have a formatted table here already. Let me go to. We have a formatted table here already. This is a formatted table. Right? Okay, of course, in our formatted table, we have for optimistic 2006 and this. So, but what we'll now do is that, what we'll now do is that, in this place now, you can see that in this place, we have 2003 and 2006. We have two outputs here, right? So, what we can just do is, you know, and when we're defining the values, we define them one by one, at least, like we finish all the whole for 2003 before going to 2006. Can you remember? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah, exactly. Ask questions. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. So what we'll do here is we come here, we now populate what we have in our scenario. 
sales goods in, for current values. Can you see that? So we'll take this down. Fine. So for optimistic 2006, Can you see that? Okay. Okay. Fine. So everything here is the same thing. Okay. So everything here is in percentage. I don't know. Something is actually. Okay. Great. All right. So for. Any question net income? What is net income? Obviously, that will be the first one we define, Abby. That will be for this. Right? Because we are taking them one by one. But we can confirm that. We can confirm that. I think we started with 2003, yes, I'm correct. So we've been able to pick up to 10.6, take note of 10.6. So we are starting from here. Okay, so I'm on you. Please let's reduce the program. Okay, so I will. Okay, so we've been able to pick for for this, okay? So we cannot pick for the others. Sorry, why do I stick it for me here? Let me just put this here. Okay, so we can pick for pessimistic. That is in, in 2003. So, if you take this down, you have this. Yeah. Then take notes of where you stopped. Definitely is going to be, you're going to be starting from here. Because the last place we stop is 12.3. Then we we'll take this down. Take this down. So the last part is this. Pessimistic. So we we'll take this. We have all this. We also come here. We take this. And then we have all this. Fine. Okay, so we can have it well formatted. I can those are actual these are actual values. They are actual values. So hold on. I can take this back like this. Okay. Uh, it is fine. So this is what we have. So you can see this is linked to this. We have this. We have this table formatted already. This is formatted because we know that, of course, when Excel is giving us our results, Excel is not going to show our results in this format. Excel is showing our results in this system generated format. Okay. So um, it's left for us to now reference those cells. So is there any question? Do we have questions? Is there anything we don't understand yet? 
Sir, please, how do we interpret this? Okay, fine. So this is the interpretation for this. Now we have we have an optimistic if you want to um, interpret this case now. So we have an optimistic case here. An optimistic case says our sales growth, our current forecast, based on our current forecast, our sales growth is five percent. But we are optimistic that sales is going to grow in 2006 by seven percent. We are pessimistic that sales will not grow by 7%, but it will grow by 4%. That is, we are pessimistic that it will drop from two, from 5% to 3%. That means it will drop by 2%. We are optimistic that it will grow by 2%. And we are pessimistic that it will drop by 3%. That's the interpretation, that's the interpretation of this sales growth rate. I think you understand that. Now we are now saying, let me highlight it because I've interpreted what this one means now. We are now saying that if the current value is 5%, and we are optimistic it will grow by 2% to 7%. What would be the impact on net income? If the current value is 5%, and our net income is 132.55 million naira, and we are optimistic that it will grow by 7%, then our net income will be 155.55 million. Do you understand? That's interpretation. So if we are now pessimistic that sales growth will drop by 2%, by 4% down to 3%, then we are also pessimistic that our net income will drop from 155.55 million to 110.45 million. Do you understand the interpretation? Yes. Yeah, that, that's the interpretation. So that is for 2003. So everything here now is for 2003, is for 2003 numbers. Everything here is for 2006 numbers. So that's the interpretation. Is there any other question? Do we have any other question? Okay, so if you don't have any other question, I would advise that you practice this on your own. In fact, you can even have, you can even do your own scenario, apart from the one we have done here. Do your own scenario, get your scenario table, format, format this like this. So the reason why this is this is because the thing is that uh, uh, the table we have here now this is this makes a lot of sense right because this is a whole lot this tells management a whole lot we can change our forecasting factors and immediately see the impact it's going to have on our projected numbers we can we can perform sensitivity and scenario analysis based on different numbers it's it's actually nice so this is how you do this is how you 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 do a uh, financial statement forecasting and how you define sensitivity and then uh, scenario analysis so basically what we have looked at today just to revise we have considered how we uh, carry out sensitivity analysis and we explain that sensitivity analysis can be done in two ways either one input factor or two input factor in one input factor you are only selecting one forecasting factor while in two input factor we are selecting two forecasting factors. Now you are seeing the impact of these forecasting factors on your defined uh, output, be it EBITDA, be it EBIT, or whatever defined output you want management to see the impact of those, the changes in those variables on. So that's for sensitivity analysis. For scenario analysis, we are saying that sometimes management you want to see the impact on more than one variable because for sensitivity analysis, sensitivity analysis will only tell you the impact on one variable. For scenario analysis, we'll go beyond one variable to two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, depending on the numbers that you want. So you can now see at a glance if you change any of these um, if you change any of these scenarios, if you change any of these scenarios, what will be the impact on your projected numbers, the output, be it a be it um, return on equity, dividends per share, sales growth, and all the rest. So I believe you know the difference now between uh, sensitivity analysis and scenario analysis. They are two different things. They are not the same thing. Okay, so what I expect you to know now is know what's an assumption, know what is, um, how, you, how you specify a model, know how you forecast numbers, how you forecast numbers, do your common size statement, take the average of those line, each of the line items, then get management briefing. In case management have their own policy assumptions, 
the Yano policy assumptions, use the average numbers in your common size statement to forecast your numbers. Then when you forecast your numbers, obviously your balance sheet is not going to balance. If your balance sheet is not balancing, next thing is now for you to think because you cannot present an unbalanced balance sheet to management. So what do you use as your discretionary fund or discretionary number? I told you that the safest thing to use is your short-term debt. So what you do is use your short-term debt to balance the balance sheet. Now, if your balance sheet is now showing a negative short-term debt, I told you that you cannot have a negative short-term debt, but what it means is you are overpaying more than you are owing. You are paying more than you are owing, and it's not possible. So you can pay your short, you pay your short-term debt with your cash and cash equivalent. Now, change your short-term debt, and where you are having, I gave you that formula in one of the scenario, cases we look at. Where you are having negative short-term debt, it must be zero right. And the excess cash added to your cash and cash equivalent, it automatically does that once you apply that formula. So if you apply that formula, you'll see that your balance sheet is still going to balance. All right, the first thing, we, the last thing we now look at is how do you do sensitivity and scenario analysis? So what we're going to have is, you're going to have a test, and the test is going to be this way. You, it's exactly what we have here, but the numbers will change. All right, the numbers will change. So the forecasting factors will change. So you apply those forecasting factors on your historical numbers. You do scenario and sensitivity analysis. All right, then you will submit. All right, so this one will be checked, marked alongside with the previous um, assignment I was given. And this assignment is compulsory. It's actually compulsory. Without it, we may not actually get our e certificate. So it's very cool. The previous assignment, you've not done distribution, those um, lookup functions. Yes, we will treat it. The fact is that I don't want us to be treating lookup function. Otherwise, we'll be wasting time. We'll not move forward. Do you understand? Okay, sir. Yes. Imagine we have been treating lookup function. Well, well, which time are we going to have to treat this? And we still have some other things to cover. So the uh, lookup function is not, is not an issue. You, you get the, if, so long you have done it, you just do the assignment. That is the most important thing. If you have done it, you will get the results. That's not the issue. Do you get? We, can, we yeah. cannot be using this time now to do lookup function. Otherwise, you will not learn anything. It will just be okay. dragging backwards. So what we'll do is we can have a special class where we now treat, we know that this today, what we are doing is we are treating all assignments and past questions. And besides, you're still going to have a revision of all the advanced Excel tools that we talked about. I'm working on something. So we have a comprehensive revision. There will be no basic aspect of Excel, advanced Excel that you won't be able to, you won't be able to know. All right? So, okay, sir. Thank you. Yeah, so that's where we're going to end this class today and expect a test, a compressive one, like this question. You're going to do it on your own. And if possible, you can make a presentation. But the presentation for that test will not be in the class. On your own, you will just book a time. You will present. I'll be there on Zoom. You will present and explain what you have done. Because it's not just uh, financial modeling, it's just for us. It's not just you presenting numbers. You have to be able to interpret, explain what you have done. So for us to know you actually understand this course, you must, you must have your own uh, project and present. You have to do a presentation and explain what you have done. It's going to be simple. It's not going to be as complex as this, but it's going to be simple, touching basic things with this course. You. Right. And you will give me your own time to present. You can submit, give me and your how many time. minutes. Uh, it depends. Let's say, let's say 10 minutes, it should be true. Okay. 10 minutes should be true. So we can have three presentations in a day, but you're going to give your own timing. But first of all, I will give you the test, work on it, build the model, do the projections, do the scenario and sensitivity analysis, balance the balance sheet, do a lot of things, then present what you have done. Okay. All right, so I'm going to end this class here. Okay. All right, thank, so you. thank you. Thank you very right. much. You're welcome.